All aboard for the transcribed premiere production, The Cruise of the Paul Parrot, that thrilling story of whaling days and buried treasure. The trim ship, Paul Parrot, has landed finally at the secret island of Galto, where Ezra Grange, the ship's owner, along with Captain Dalton and our young friends Johnny Robbins and Sue Grange, expect to find the valuable mineral deposit indicated on the map originally drawn by Johnny's father and the Lady Ezekiel Kip. While the party is ashore endeavoring to locate the mineral deposit, the two troublemakers, Altesti and Red Mulhooly, who have been imprisoned in the hold of the ship, manage to escape and overpower First Mate George Wainwright, who remained aboard to guard them. Then, in a raging argument which develops between the two plotters, Altusti is thrown overboard in a sea of man-eating sharks, and Red is left alone. Red takes one of the whale boats and rows some distance out to sea, around to the far side of the island, so as not to be seen by the shore party. He finally beaches his boat in a little inlet, and then... Well, I ain't got Altesti to worry about no more. Now I'm on my own. I'll be a millionaire, so help me. <clears throat> and now that I've got this boat beached, better haul her ashore and hide her someplace. Uh, this clump of bushes should do. <clears throat> there she be. Now let's take a peep at our blooming island here. There ain't much more than that big ugly volcano and a bit of woods about the base of it. That and a... Hole, a vast. That looks like a cabin at the edge of the woods. Who could be there? I better go over and have a look. I better keep this gun handy. Here we are. I'll just throw the door open quiet, like. Don't move where we are. Hmm. Empty. I'll have a chance to look around. A vast. Somebody coming. <laughs> Good fishing. <laughs> Grub for a couple of days now. Good fishing. Stand aside, you walking skeleton, and don't make no noise. Hey, who are you? You walrus? What are you doing on my island? This is mine. Mine, I tell you. Get off. Years ago, I set foot ashore here and claimed it. And it's mine. And nobody's getting that mineral deposit but me. I stole that. There's plenty what knows of this island. Galto, that's what it's called. And I know that much. So how can you stand there and say nobody knows about it? Galto! How come you know that name? That's what me and Jonathan Robbins named the place when we landed here for water years ago. Hold on there, you swab. You and Jonathan Robbins, did you say? I blanket walrus, that's what I said. And however ye come to know it. Tell that a minute, you lubber. I gotta think. I has to have it quiet when I thinks. Hmm. Jonathan Robbins was the father of that blooming little sprout that's our cabin boy. Hold. What's your name, you mildewed old fossil? No man can call Ezekiel Kip a fossil without being swamped. Stow it, stow it, stow it, I say. So you're Ezekiel Kip, are you? Blister and barnacles. You're no ghost, are you? You're supposed to be dead. Dead? How do you know all this about me? It seems there's foul work afoot that nothing's a secret anymore. Old man, there's a chance we may be friends. We could do a lot for each other. How do you mean? Speak up. Well, listen to this, mate. Years ago, you and Jonathan Robbins discovered this island had rich minerals on it when you were sent ashore here from your ship for water. You both held your peace and made a map of the place, intending to return when you were able to outfit your own brig, to mine the minerals and get rich from the Salem. How ye know this, I don't know, but it's the gospel truth. Speak on, man. In time, you ran off with the map, leaving Robbins with nothing for his pains but anger for you and hate for the sea. He quit the life of a seafaring man and moved inland to farm. Be that as it might, there's no profit in going into matters what's past. <laughs> oh, I know what a blooming clever dog you are, Kip. Well, though the map was all yours, you had no chance to ever get back to the island, so you sold it to Ezra Grange. And then the rest of the story don't fit. But here's as how I knows it. A year or so ago, you were supposed to have died, and you told the story of this island to a Spaniard named Altesti on your deathbed. Well, Altesti and me was mates until the day when the sharks got hungry. So, that's how it is you know so much. I was down, so sick I was, and sure I was dying. So I told Altesti, who was me matey then. But I didn't die after all, see? I'm hale and hearty as a pine spar. <laughs> and last year, I managed to ship back to this island, where I jumped ship with one of the dories in the middle of the night. And I've been working my claim since. But now I see foul weather ahead. Hold on, Kip. You've nothing to worry from me. I'm willing to work with you. 
But what you have got to worry about is on the other side of this bloody island. How do you mean? That bloomin' landlubber Ezra Grange has a full-rigged ship in the harbor there, and his whole blasted crew is out hunting for your treasures. Shiver me, Timbers! This is the one thing I've been fearing ever since I sold him that map. I didn't need the map myself. I know the place like a book. But I might have known that a shark like him with a head for business wouldn't take long to follow up that map. You see, that's why we've got to hold together. Maybe you're right, mate. It's just us against the whole bloomin' crew. But with my brains and your beef, it should be smooth sailing to run their plans aground. Avast, then. Let's shake on it. Red Mulholy's the name. Agreed, Red. Shake. But look here. We'd best get to the leeward side of the island under full sail and see what we can see. Yeah, no telling what they're doing right now. Now, here's what I think. Now, let's see. We've assigned all the men to that task, haven't we, Captain? Aye, aye, Mr. Grange. Buscara and his party are to explore the north side of the island, and Jowett and his party the south side. Nicholson and a few hands are scaling the volcano to investigate just how dangerous she is. But, Captain Dalton, how is it possible to tell just how dangerous a volcano can be? Yes, especially before it really erupts. I've been trying to figure that out myself. Well, to be truthful, there's there's nothing we can tell definitely, but we can make a good guess at it. I'd go further than that, Captain Dalton. As I understand it, Nicholson's an old hand at exploring, uh, and he's come in close contact with just such a thing as this before. You see, volcanoes are found where the Earth's crust is of inferior strength. Oh. Areas or islands such as this one we're on actually are ocean basins or areas bordering them. Now, when Nicholson finishes his inspection of this island and discovers just the formation of the Earth's crust as near as he can, he'll be able to form a pretty close opinion of just how active this smoky mouth can be. Now, uh, you're right there, Mr. Grange. Well, I sure hope Mr. Nicholson's report is good. Oh, I know it'll be a good one. We've just got to be able to stay on this island. As I was saying, Mr. Grange, the rest of the hands under the quartermaster are building cabins ashore for us to live in while we dig for the minerals. Good. Then that means the three of us, yourself and Dickon and I, are free to follow up the map and see if we can find trace of this mineral load. But, Ezra, how about us? Aren't we coming with you? Yes. We'd want to help. <laughs> Blow me down, sir. You might know the young ones wouldn't be left in our wake. Ah, the salt of the earth, I say, the salt of the earth. Ah. Well, it looks like Polly's for you, Johnny and Sue, <laughs> I see no reason why you shouldn't come along. Yeah, suits me, Captain, but stay out of danger. Now, uh, let's look at this map. Look, uh, there's the harbor, the volcano, and here's approximately where we are now, close to the foot of the mountain. Now, the outcropping of the vein should be directly ahead of us on the lower slope. Let's set out here. Excuse me, sir. Sue and I were just sort of wondering, what is the mineral that we're looking for? Yes. You know, Ezra, you never have said just exactly what it is. And although my father was one of the discoverers, he never said anything about it to me, you know. And he was so disgusted with the whole business, he never told Mother or me anything about it. Well, you can't blame anybody for being disgusted when his partner steals his possessions. It was when that swab Ezekiel Kip ran off with the map that your father let the sea, wasn't it, Johnny? That's right, Captain. Well, I'm not certain of the exact nature of the mineral. It's one of two things, that I know. But I'd rather not say until I see it. I know it'll be easy to say, because if it could be identified by two seamen who'd naturally know little of minerals, should be pretty obvious. Begging your pardon, sirs, but this part of the underbrush don't look as if nobody ain't been here. What's that, Dickon? You think somebody's been here before us? Aye, aye, Captain Dalton. Look here, look. Blow me down if that ain't a beaten part. Dickon's right. That is a part. Oh, blow me down. This is serious. If anybody else knows about this, we've trouble on our hands. Ah, breakers ahead. Dirty weather ahead. Avast! Avast! Pally don't like the looks of things either. He feels it. There's danger in the air. There goes old Smoky Mouth again. Gee, that rumbling is sort of scary. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I think, uh, uh, yes, we should be almost at the beginning of the deposit. The map shows it to be in a place just above a slight rise. And there's the rise, Mr. Grange. Right ahead. A sort of a little hill. Yes. A sort of a little hill. You're right. You both have keen eyes. Here, let's scale it. Ah, rock! It's not that very afoot. Blow me down. Quiet the bird, Dickon. His croaking isn't very cheerful at a time like this. Ah, dead man. Ah, Still that, you bloomin' pelican. Bad enough without your jaw. Have ask. Look, sirs. What is it now? Footprints. Footprints in wet earth. And not very old, you may lay to that. We'll have to proceed cautiously. Sue, you and Johnny stay behind us. There's no telling who may be here. Yes, sir. Oh, Ezra, do be careful. Come ahead. We're at the foot of the rise now. 
I can't see who'd know about this but us. How Testy and Redder and Irons aboard the Powell Parrot. There could be no one else. Do you suppose one of the men from our crew who were exploring the island might have gotten here ahead of us and left those footprints? No, I don't think so, Mr. Grange. They didn't go this way at all. Well, we're at the top of the rise, and the deposit should be right over... Look! Blow me down! Lash me to a yard on. Why, the place is all dug out. Why, there, there's a regular mine there. So look! There's piles of earth all around. Mr. Grange, this couldn't be done in a short time. Somebody's been working here for a long while. You can lay to that. Blow me down! This bear's licking over. I'm going to look around a bit. Easy there, Dickon. You can't tell what you may be running into. Aye, aye, Captain. But I don't think there's anyone here now. Look lively for Reese. Reese there. Oh, that's Paul. If you wanted to stay on his shoulders, stow that screeching in my ear. I'd blow me down if I... Oh, that's there. Dickon! Dickon! What happened to you? Good Lord, he's disappeared. Lash me to a yard on He's tumbled into a pitfall. Look, there's a regular trench dug all along, covered with branches. Oh. And when anybody stepped on it, he'd fall into the trench. Dickon, are you all right? Aye, aye, men. Save him, Oh, hoy up there. Don't worry about old Dickon. Just going to close it to the mine. There's blooming trench down here all as far as I can see. Step lively, me hearties. we got to get him out. Somebody built this blasted trench as a pitfall to trap anybody who tried to get to the mine. As soon as we get Dick in a loft from that hole, I'll track down the rat who's done this thing. Look, those bushes up the hill behind the mine are moving, and there's no wind. I think there's somebody up there. Ahoy there, whoever you are. Show your colors or I'll shoot. <laughs> ah, ah, scuttle the ship, scuttle the ship. Ah! This does look like trouble. Captain Dalton and his friends may be able to get Dickon out of the pitfall, but even then they don't realize whom they're up against. They don't know that Red Mulhooly escaped from the Paul Parrot, nor do they know that Ezekiel Kipp, one of the discoverers of the mineral deposit, is not only alive, but on the island working his claim. How will this affect Grange's claim to half the treasure? And what can this valuable mineral be? To clear up the increasing mystery which surrounds our friends, we'll have to wait for the next adventure in the cruise of the Paul Parrot. Your Paul Parrot announcer is Dave Ward.